draft bust. Those three words get coaches and general managers fired, piss off fan bases, and set franchises back multiple seasons. We see it every year. Teams using high draft capital on promising prospects, only to see the whole thing go up in smoke. Ryan Leaf, Jamarcus Russell, go look up their pre-draft scouting reports and you'd think they were the next John Elway. Drafting is an imperfect science. Prospect evaluation involves keeping track of a never-ending list of variables, and it's brutally difficult identifying which of those variables are most important. Scouts are often blinded by positive physical variables that overshadow the negatives and forget about the rest of the evaluation. Instead of looking for the ingredients of the next Aaron Rodgers, let's instead look at the ingredients for a draft bust. After we sift through all the crap, what truly projects success and what sounds the alarm for future failure? The player that perfectly encapsulates that answer is Oregon quarterback Justin Herbert. He has the prototypical 6'6 size with an actual bazooka attached to his right shoulder, an athletic profile comparable to Andrew Luck, and physicality that scouts would kill for. But every year, those physical attributes are overvalued and a bust's red flags are left overlooked. Herbert has accuracy issues to all areas of the field that can show up at any given moment. His inconsistent mechanics cause him to wildly overthrow or just flat out miss his targets, and he's more of a thrower than an actual quarterback. That includes his pre- and post-snap processing, which we'll get into later, and more importantly, his inability to throw the ball with touch. He's all Nolan Ryan, no Greg Maddox. He struggles to layer his throws, change tempos, and throw multiple speeds, which are imperative for the position. Let's take a look at a couple of plays from the Oregon-Washington game this season. The Ducks are running a legendary air raid concept called Y-Cross, which is designed for tight end Hunter Campmoyer to run a deep cross through the middle of the defense and sit down wherever he finds space, while the X receiver runs a go route to clear out the coverage. Camp Moyer is coached to go under one and over two. He has to go under the first linebacker so he can quickly reach his landmark, then over the second linebacker so he can slip behind him and find open space. Washington is playing a basic spot drop cover three zone. It's the standard form of cover three where they drop to a spot while maintaining vision of the quarterback, which creates more space for the receivers to come open. Camp Moyer goes under one, then over two, who isn't getting depth. This gives Herbert 15 yards of space in front of the safety to put some air under the ball and loft it over that linebacker. But instead of throwing here with anticipation, he throws his fastball, which almost results in an interception. From the end zone angle, we can get a better idea of what Herbert's looking at and how he's processing the coverage. As he drops back, he sees the safety deep and the linebacker underneath right when he's about to throw. Instead of lofting the ball into the open space with anticipation, he chooses the more challenging throw, and the ball sails over Camp Moyer's head. Herbert often looks pretty uncomfortable playing the position and struggles to come off his first read. When he does, he rarely hits a second read with proper timing and pace. His movement in the pocket can look robotic, and his overall feel lacks fluidity. Later in the same quarter, Oregon calls Y cross again, but with receiver Michael Pittman instead of Camp Moyer running the cross, and a 12 yard out at the sticks. Washington is once again running cover three zone, but this time the linebacker will flip his eyes to Pittman and match the route. When I say match the route, I'm talking about pattern matching which starts as zone coverage, but basically turns into man coverage during the down. Herbert's first read is Pittman, who goes under the first defender and tries to get over the second, but when the linebacker matches the route, he isn't open. Herbert sees that linebacker getting depth, so he goes to his second read, the out route. Since this play started on the near hash to the boundary, this ball needs to come out early since there is a limited space to begin with. But Herbert hitches, throws without anticipation, and sails the ball way over his receiver. That little hitch is subtle, but happens repeatedly. It ruins his footwork and causes him to miss throws. His first read is the linebacker, who he sees pattern matching Pittman on the cross, so he moves to his second read on time and with proper footwork. He's loaded up to throw just as his receiver is breaking at the stem of his route, but instead of throwing with anticipation before the receiver cuts, he slightly hitches, which throws him off his balance, speeds up his delivery, and causes him to overthrow his target. These mechanical issues frequently pop up on film, and those inconsistencies make every play a roll of the dice. I've watched him miss more outbreaking routes to the sideline than anybody I remember charting, and poor mechanics are difficult for any quarterback to repeat over and over. 
I'd rather have a quarterback with unconventional mechanics like Philip Rivers, who can repeat that exact same motion on a consistent basis, rather than a guy who has perfect mechanics but can't replicate the same motion every time. First, let's focus on his left arm, which has to finish in a tucked position to shore up the front side of his motion. If that arm generates too much force in either direction, that will affect the rest of the throw. Since Herbert's arm isn't tucked tight, his upper body has nothing to resist against, which causes him to speed up and release the ball too early. When his left arm flies away from his body, that movement affects his right arm as well, forcing him to throw quicker than he wants to. When one part of your motion is rushed, the other parts need to speed up to match it. This causes the ball to be released quicker than intended and produces overthrows. Another issue with his motion is what coaches call rising. From the point Herbert loads the ball to the point he throws, look how his head and waist lift into the air. That much movement during his motion causes his head and more importantly his eyes to bounce around, which leads to inaccuracy. Let's look at Brady as an obvious example. A key to his success is repeatable mechanics. When he steps up to fire, he can trust the ball will go exactly where he intends to throw it. Let's focus on his shoulder tuck and head movement. His front side is strong and maintains the balance in his motion. And watch his head. It barely moves even a centimeter before the ball is released. Without the ability to repeat your mechanics again and again, consistency is hard to come by. And plus, you'll never marry Giselle. These issues for Herbert will show up at any time and only get worse when he's facing pressure. If any part of his motion speeds up at all, the ball is released too early and his throws will sail. On a third and 10, ASU is running a creeper or simulated pressure, which to the quarterback looks like a blitz, but only brings four defenders like a standard rush. Quarterbacks generally assume the four linemen are rushing the passer. When linebackers blitz up the middle, it's usually a blitz designed to overload the protection. A creeper blitz simulates pressure for the QB, but only four defenders rush when both defensive ends drop into coverage. The running back blocks the linebacker just enough so that there is a little space to operate, but when Herbert senses that immediate pressure, the footwork on his three-step drop gets choppy. He sinks his body low, and instead of tucking his left arm, it flies wildly outside of his body, speeding up his delivery and rapidly hurrying his motion. He fails to get on top of the ball and it sails 10 yards over the receiver's head. Herbert has a questionable ability to read defenses before and after the snap, and too often sticks on his first read without scanning the field for another option. Defenses in the NFL are infinitely more complicated than the pillow fight Pac-12 defenses. On 2nd and 7, ASU is playing a spot drop cover 4 zone, where just like the spot drop coverage Washington played, they will drop to their spot and keep eyes on the quarterback. NFL quarterbacks are way too good for defenses to play spot drop zone, because they will be relentlessly picked apart. That's why even in zone coverages, teams will pattern match. Anyways, Oregon has a spot concept with a corner route which is the perfect call against cover 4 zone. Cover 4 has 4 defenders deep and only 3 underneath, and spot is a quick game staple in every team's playbook. It creates a horizontal and vertical stretch, which is why it's such a great concept. Quarterbacks usually read the curl flat linebacker, whose responsibility is to play the curl first, and if there's no threat there, move to the flat. It's a simple read for the quarterback, throw where the curl flat linebacker is not. Herbert gets a bad snap, and when he looks up, the cornerback is deep and the linebacker is all over the spot route, leaving the flat wide open. On second and seven, you might not get a first down throwing to the flat, but there's space to work with, and at the very least, sets up a third and short. Herbert cannot come off his first read and throws an ugly interception to a blatantly covered receiver. This video might come off like Herbert has personally wronged my family, but just so you know, that is not the case. He has tons of talent, and there are many reasons why he's involved in this year's top 15 discussion. For every four or five misfires, he will make one absolutely bonkers play. Those incredible throws are absolutely tantalizing for talent evaluators, and there are plenty of scouts and coaches who believe if he can do it once, I can teach him to do it every time. Herbert will occasionally put it all together and flash that insane potential. And that's why I'm worried teams will become infatuated, because when he does do it, there's just not many who can do it better than him. Here, Washington is disguising their cover two man defense. All game, they used a very interesting wrinkle where their linebacker begins about eight yards off the ball, then at the snap, starts running towards the line of scrimmage to either blitz or cover the running back. 
At the bottom, Oregon is running a fake screen. Their offense relies heavily on bubble and smoke screens, and their fake screens burn aggressive defenses. On the other side, wide receiver Johnny Johnson is running a seam read route, where based on the positioning of the safeties during the play, he will continue up the seam or split the two deep shell. The fake screen isn't there, so Herbert comes back to Johnson who reads the open middle of the field and converts his route to a post. Herbert feels that blitzing linebacker bearing down and flat-footed, without stepping up, throws a 33-yard rope perfectly between the safeties and trailing defender. On a play with a failed fake screen, a wide receiver converting his route mid-play, and a free blitzer, Herbert makes an elite NFL caliber throw. Those throws are there on film, but they are not consistently there, and that's the problem. Scouts want the size, arm strength, and quote-unquote prototype quarterback, and Herbert can occasionally package it all together, but historically, those attributes don't often lead to successful prospects at the position. Herbert struggles to regularly hit routine throws, his mechanics are not consistent enough to replicate over and over, and his game isn't developed enough to prove he is even decent at truly playing the quarterback position. Heck, he's never even taken a snap under center, not one. He has all the ingredients of an overdrafted bust. There are too many quarterback needy teams who will force him into action before he's ready, instead of letting him sit and learn. Come draft day, a team will fall in love, rush him to start, and he, unfortunately, will fail. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Obviously, this is once again not my voice. It's been getting messed up during recording, so my friend Andrew helped out while it heals up. I'll put a link down below if you want to check out more of his excellent work. Thank you each and every week to the patron supporters. The questions have been flowing in, and the football conversations we are having have been a lot of fun. This week, we talked about the drive concept and thoughts on Tua's injury, and the Tua breakdown will be releasing potentially next week. Burrow is the number one as of now, but until the Tua episode releases, nothing is certain, and it wouldn't be a surprise if Tua bumps him out of the top spot. If you want to join the Patreon page and help support this channel, and get in on some of these types of conversations, check out the link below. My voice will hopefully be healed up by next week, but it's honestly kind of worrying, so we'll have to wait and see. So, until next Saturday, see ya!